Welcome folks to my session this afternoon. I'll be talking to you about, as soon as I can get it there, I'll be talking to you about pulse checks and how I use those in a classroom. So a little bit of background about me. Um, I have been an avid Kahoot user for seven years. I looked back today after I talked to Isabella. So seven years using Kahoot. And at the moment, I have 167 of them that are actually published. I couldn't believe that number was so high. And <laughs> as I was looking at it, one of my Kahoots has actually been played 6,400 times, which I consider to be pretty amazing. So um, background about me, I am a fifth grade teacher and have been for, this is my 18th year in the classroom. So when I talk about using Kahoot in a classroom full of kids, just know that I am consistently using it and have for about the last seven years or so. So let's get down to business and we'll talk a little bit about some pulse checks because to me, this is one of the greatest ways in the world that you can use Kahoots. So what are pulse checks? Because you know, we should probably know what we're talking about first. So to me, it's just a quick, easy way to collect some immediate feedback. And I can instantly see what's going on with my kids in my classroom and make some decisions about our lessons or about things that I need to go back and look at, or perhaps things that I thought I needed to look at that are actually going better than I had hoped they would. And who doesn't want that? So. Pulse checks to me are the perfect way to review skills and gauge some knowledge about your kids before you move on to your next topic. For instance, this week we were getting ready to think about doing some division of decimals. And I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder how much my kids remember about which direction they need to move that decimal. So I went back and pulled a Kahoot and did a little quick editing, which is really, really simple to do with a Kahoot. Once you've got one made, the editing process is incredibly simple. So I went back and shortened up one of my old cahoots and thought, let's just do a little spot check, little pulse check and see what my kids remember about being able to move that decimal before we begin long division. And I'm kind of glad that I did. I had a handful of kids that needed some confusions, a few misconceptions kind of ironed out before we moved on to the next concept. So that's one of the ways that I personally am using Kahoot for pulse checks in the classroom. And let's take a look at a Kahoot right away because nobody um, has ever wanted to turn down a Kahoot. So we're gonna do a quick one and I'm just gonna do a little pulse check of you guys out there and see what you know about pulse checks and where our knowledge base is starting the presentation. So I'm gonna click on here. And of course there will be prizes and I will pull my Kahoot up. So simple to do. We're gonna play a classic Kahoot again as George was doing with his. I will like my Bitmoji to host the game because I kind of like her. She's kind of cute and she's got pink hair and so I'm all about that. I am going to leave the show questions and answers piece on again because I think that is so incredible that we have the option to be able to do that now, which makes it much nicer for my kids who are especially playing at a distance to be able to see the questions and the answers on their device. Um, I know George is a fan of 80s retro music, uh, my personal fave for making cahoots is the fantasy music. I like that the best. I am going to let my questions be randomized and my order answers in order also. And I will trust that nobody is going to jump into our game that shouldn't be there. And I'm going to leave that two step join alone. So I'm going to launch my classic Kahoot. If you're playing on your device, head to the app. If you're playing on a computer, head to Kahoot.it. And off we go. Let's go, mm -hmm. kids. How much do you know about pulse checks? Here we go. Oh, 
All right, get your fingers ready. This little quickie, ooh, some double points already to kick the game off. What do you think one purpose of a pulse check would be? I don't know, that Axe body spray, that's a big thing right now if you're in fifth grade. Everybody should have some Axe body spray. My entire room is full of it. It's kind of that time of year right now in fifth grade. So I'm sure that um, I would have quite a few kids that would need their evaluation of Axe body spray used, especially after PE days. And so, yes, it was in fact not the Axe body spray, but the preparation and the understanding of the kids. And here we go for her leaderboard. There we are. All right, five questions here. Make your mark quickly. Double points again. A girl loves some double points. Pulse checks can help teachers differentiate instruction or form intervention groups. Ooh, look at that. A little slow reveal of the picture piece. I like that. Makes my kids wonder what's underneath that picture and gives them something to look at and guess over if they answer quickly. Sure does. If you're looking for which children answered quickly and effectively and were on target through the entire Kahoot, they might need a little bit of a differentiation in their lesson, maybe a different track for them to head on. And if you notice, you've got some hangers back who aren't quite where you would like them to be. This is a perfect way to decide who maybe could use just a little intervention group. Ooh, little movement there on the leaderboard. Why should they be used? What are you thinking? I would agree to understand what your children know. Although my kids would really like for line leader to be chosen by this, I'm certain. So line leader, big thing still in fifth grade. And a little more movement there on the leaderboard. Multi-select answers. I like those because I want my kids to have to read more than just one answer. I don't like them just to take a quick look and find the one they think is right. I like multi-select. You should probably read all the answers for those, not just that first one that uh, pops to your attention. Yes, all of those fabulous reasons. Pulse checks do give your immediate feedback on whatever it is that your kids are working on. Ooh, that top spot, still holding steady. Last one, folks, on the first Kahoot. Pulse checks look for what in order to guide some instruction? Signs of life. You know, there are some days when I'm really thinking that maybe I should have just a little pulse check Kahoot to see about signs of life, especially after um, our daylight savings time this week. My kids could use a little signs of life testing. And so we're looking for some confusions. We're looking for some understandings. And now we're looking to see who's at the top of the leaderboard. Here's the first podium out of my session. Huh, there we are, I have number three. And with five out of five, there's Rusty in number two. And at the top of the podium huh, is the leader through quite a bit of our session. So if you're in the top five kids, take a snapshot of the screen and send an email to the lovely Isabella and she will send you out some marvelous swag. I am gonna pop back now into my presentation and on we go. Be ready for the second Kahoot coming up at the end of my session in order to see where my confusions and understandings were with you folks. Here's why I like the pulse checks for Kahoot, because I wanna know right now, 
I want to know immediately where my issues are and where my problems are. I don't want to get halfway through my math lesson or halfway through my reading lesson and discover that someplace there's a misconception. Someplace I've got a couple kids who didn't quite get the full understanding of the standard or the concept being presented. I really need to know who's got who's got it down pat, who knows what they're doing, or who needs just a little bit of review in order to be able to go back and take a second look at something before we move on. So I mean, I use Pulse Check when we are doing spelling to refresh Greek and Latin root words, because if we are reading books that we don't know and we're coming across things in our other studies for science and social studies, I want my kids to stay refreshed on what my Greek and Latin roots mean, because that helps so much with context clues. I like to use pulse checks if I'm building on math skills and I'm going from one skill to the next. I like to know whether they had that first skill down before I launch head first into that second skill. If there's something I need to go back and reteach or remediate, Cahoots are a complete go-to for just a fast, easy pulse check that I can see the results of automatically without having to crunch data and go home and look at numbers and put things in on a scale. Just being able to see the results right there in front of you is an amazing thing. I like my Cahoots just to give a quick check over if we have had maybe a rough lesson or if we've been out on break. I like to do a nice pulse check when we come back from breaks, or if you live where I do and you've had some snow days and some inclement weather, sometimes a nice pulse check coming back in after a couple unplanned days off is a fabulous way to get your lessons started. Let me give you some practical tips for launching pulse checks using the one and only amazing Kahoot. Set some guidelines for your kids when you're going into these sessions where all you're doing is checking their pulse. Here's why you need the guidelines. Because I don't want the kids to think that this is graded and I don't want them to think that their result on this Kahoot is gonna harm their grade, gonna go into the grade book. I just need my kids to know that all I'm doing is checking to see what they know, what they remember. I don't want them to think that their neighbor's answer that went in faster is more important than their answer. So I sit down before I start doing pulse checks with my kids and really give them a solid understanding of why these are important to me and why I use them as a teaching tool. So. It's important for them to know that you want their answer. You don't want their neighbor's answer. You want them to take their time and honestly answer it. And you really aren't looking to see who answers it first. This isn't something where I want you to be the first every time. So generally, if I'm doing a pulse check, I don't give prizes for the top three. I give prizes for everybody that did the pulse check because I don't want it to be a competition. I want it to be an accurate, relevant understanding of their knowledge, not how fast they can hit that answer button. So some guidelines, incredibly important. I love the supporting images in a Kahoot. My kids will actually look for the supporting images now because they know that I will give them some kind of a hint or some kind of a clue and especially when you're doing a pulse check, because this isn't learning that's been in front of them sometimes. Sometimes these are topics that could have been a lesson or two away. And if you give them some sort of a supportive image within the Kahoot question, then it'll help kind of jumpstart them or give them a little bit of a leg up. So I find that the supporting images are absolutely a necessary component to my pulse checks. And luckily the image bank at Kahoot has got a ton of offerings for images that you can include into your pulse checks or into your normal Kahoots. 
So important to throw in some supportive images, especially with a pulse check, because it is going to be a fairly short Kahoot. It's going to be sort of concise. And if all it took was your student to be able to look at a picture and suddenly for my visual learners that clicks with them for what the answer should be, then that's the support that I want them to be able to have. So supportive images, very important to me. Number three tip, you got to throw some humor in there. It's got to be able to be fun. Everything should not always be so incredibly serious for kids. They should be able to have a little bit of fun, even embedded in a pulse check. Because generally, I, you could slide one answer in there that's slightly sideways or kind of silly, maybe even two if it's something that you're pretty certain they know the answer to. So the other day, I had asked my kids in a pulse check, what is important about moving the decimal when you are multiplying by a power of 10? And one of my answers was, because it makes the grilled cheese taste better. Now, <laughs> everyone knows decimals really have very little to do with grilled cheese, but if you were my kids and you were sitting in my room and you just needed some silly thing in order to kind of give you a chance to giggle and, and kind of settle back down again and take a deep breath, who doesn't need a little bit of humor every now and again just to make you laugh and just to make you kind of settle back in, not take yourself so seriously sometimes. So throw in a little bit of humor in your answers, not any ax body spray, that'll choke a person out, but throw some humor in. Reward your questions is another lovely tip for making pulse checks in Kahoot. Here's why I reward my questions. Because I really wanna know what my kids actually know and are paying attention to. I don't ever want my questions to get so rote that they don't take time to truly read them before they answer. I want my kids to be able to always evaluate what it is that's being asked of them before they answer. And sometimes I just want to make sure that they are engaging with the question and with what the question is actually asking them, especially once you start thinking about how this skill transfers, transfers over to other learning areas. So I really spend a lot of time on the questions. Even if I'm borrowing somebody else's Kahoot, I'll go through and tweak the questions or edit them. And I like the idea of rewording the questions for the reasons I've listed. I also like rewording the questions because if you missed it on question two and I stopped and talked about it and then I reworded it and it showed up again on question four, if I explained your misconception well enough after the faux pas on two, then I know that by the time we hit question four, or question five, and that question comes around again, if you still miss it, then I'm really going to need to stop and think about your skill set a little bit more because now you've had the same question twice reworded in a different way. And even after I've stopped and discussed it the first time, if it doesn't transfer over into the second time the question shows up, then those are some of the kids that I need to maybe pull off into a small group and give a little extra attention to. So take a stab at rewording some of your questions and see what kind of results you get from your students after they've answered a couple of those. You'd be surprised how fast they will go into, I really need to read the question mode before they start answering. Number five, do not grade your pulse check. As teachers, we are already grading enough. This isn't a grading activity. This is just a pulse check. It's a quick way to get immediate feedback. It's not a hard and fast grade that you're gonna put into a grade book. Oftentimes, like I said, the skills that I'm doing a pulse check for are skills that we have already had 
and, and I'm just freshening them up before we build on to the next thing. In reading, if I know that we are getting ready to talk about making inferences, then I want to go back and maybe do a pulse check on background knowledge or schema before I get ready to teach inference. So I've already graded my background knowledge and my schema information when I taught that standard to begin with. So I don't need to grade this pulse check. I just need this pulse check to be there so my kids go, oh yeah, I remember now how to access my schema and how important my background knowledge is. And she's gonna want me to use that as we begin to make inferences. So do not grade your pulse checks. Save yourself some time. Let the pulse checks do for you what they need to. They need to just let you know where your kids are at right now, what their retention is, what their abilities are, where the misconceptions are, where any small misunderstandings may be. So do not worry about grading your pulse checks. Please, you work hard enough. Number six, do those pulse checks frequently. The more often that you do a pulse check, the more your kids, your students will adapt themselves to the concept of pulse checks. So if you do them fairly regularly, then it isn't a surprise to your kids. They know what you're doing. They know what you're doing with the information and they know why you're doing this. I mean, so often I think kids wonder what good is any of this going to do or why is she asking me this again we've already done this skill and if i say to them listen i need you to know this skill of moving the decimal place i need you to know that skill so when we come over to long division and i'm going to want you to move the decimal for me there i need to know that you remember how to do that so if we are doing Context clues, I want to come back and do a pulse check on Greek and Latin root words, because I need to know that you recognize those roots in words. And if you come to something else when we are in reading and we're in our social studies book or we're in our science textbook and you come across something you don't know, but you can identify the root in it, I want you to at least have some clue of remembrance from a spelling list a few weeks ago when you still approach that word in context in another area of our day. So if you do your pulse checks fairly frequently and don't do them so much that it makes you and the kids crazy, <laughs> but do them enough to where your kids get used to them and it isn't quite such a big deal for them and they honestly understand what they're there for and what that information does in their course of study. And now, dun, 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 it's time for our second Kahoot, where I will have a pretty good idea of who is understanding pulse checks and who might still have some misconceptions about them. So this one's a little bit longer. And I will get us going now. Oh, say there. And then I hit the wrong thing. Now I will get us going. There it is. So I'm going to stay with the classic again and let my Bitmoji host the game. I am going to go ahead because I am so in love with this option of allowing the question and answers to show up on the devices. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one on. I am going to leave my fantasy lobby music, but I'll turn it down low. I'm going to let my questions be randomized, answers as well. I'm not going to worry about a two-step join. If you are just popping in, make sure that on your app, you are on the Kahoot app. And if you are on a device, head to Kahoot it. And let's take a little pulse check of our own knowledge and understanding. I'm um, blow this up to full screen. There's my Bitmoji hanging out, doing a little waiting for folks. Here we are. Let's kick her on in. There's 10 questions. 
and on we go. Purposeful points of pulse checking. Alliteration, also a favorite of mine. Question one of 10, multi-select and double points right out of the box. What is the goal of that pulse check? What are we gauging? Ha ha, here's what I need you to notice. The um, picture clue. How many darts are there in that dartboard? Hmm. Will this have something to do with how many answers there should be for this question? Huh. Three darts in the dartboard and uh, three answers to the question. Now, if you're doing regular pulse checks, you'll be amazed at how fast your kids will start to catch the idea that there's something hidden generally in most of those pictures. And then when I get ready to teach text structures down the road in reading, they will already be ready to look at captions and things like that to find more information to help them answer the question. Oh, 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 if it is not the winner from the first Kahoot in first place already again. Question two, pulse checks can be used any time in a lesson to check for understanding. It's important to move that true and false around a little bit. Don't ever let your kids get complacent enough to think that red is always one and blue is always the other. Well, of course they can be used any time in a lesson. If you feel the need for one to be used, yeah, they can be popped in any time in a lesson. Oh, and Eric is now in the lead. Three of 10, a double points again. In case I forgot to mention it, oh, Kahoot is free. True or false, folks. It's a magic teacher word right there. Free, free is always the magic teacher word. Is this in a free account? Then yes, we're gonna have that today. Eric's still holding that lead. And question four, why should we use pulse checks? I actually played through this with my fifth graders to make sure that it made sense to them because there are no harsher critics in the whole wide world than a class of fifth graders this time of year. Yep, it's important to understand what your kids know. Oh, Eric, where have you gone? Halfway there, more double points. Pulse checks should be graded. Absolutely not. We're not grading any pulse checks. Pulse checks are just what they sound like. They're just little spot checks, just small peeks into the understanding that your students have about a certain concept. Don't hold, don't, you've got no time to begin with. They're not summative. They're a little quick formative assessments. Don't grade those poor things. Multi-select. What are they gonna show us? Pulse checks show us. Yes, see how brilliant you all are. Everybody got it right. Yeah, they're gonna give you some observations, some insights, some information, some immediate feedback. They are wonderful things. 
And they're so quick and they're so easy. They're so effortless, especially with the question banks that you can tap into on Kahoot. The creation tool is so, so effortless also. So fast to make just a quick little five, 10 question pulse check. So easy, so worth it. Question seven, multi-select. What are these pulse checks looking for? Yep, looking for some understanding and hunting for those confusions. I don't know how many times I've done a pulse check and thought, I was really sure we had that concept down. And, and maybe we did at the time, but it's a little rusty right now. We need a little, little of the dust off of it. And we need to stop and think about that again, because we're going to need that going into our next lesson, our next skill, our next unit, wherever it is that we're headed. And we're moving around a little bit. Question eight is a multi-select question as well. Woo! Images. Let me take this moment to show you that if you did not know, you can put in a video into your question, how to use images in the library. So if you were really looking for something If you are really looking for something that's going to give your kids a little more of a boost, throw a little video right in there. And that will allow your kids an opportunity to get just a little more of a leg up than even a picture might. If you were teaching something that had a step process behind it and you thought maybe it would help to throw a little video tutorial into my pulse check and just kind of remind them about how we flip that fraction and what a reciprocal means and let them see a little video that should help them click through to their prior knowledge as well. Oh, Christine is in the lead. Question nine at 10. Benefits of using my very favorite thing in the world, Kahoot. So what is the benefit of using a Kahoot? There has to be some benefit. And in a minute, we're going to discover what that is. And of course, it is everything. It really does allow for a ton of fun. It gives you some much faster reactions than if you were taking a pile of papers home and you had to grade them at night. If you were looking to decide where you were having problems at, if you were wanting a faster access to everybody's stuff, you know, we all have those kids that don't turn their papers in in a timely manner. And so it's really tough to tell whether they're actually having problems or not. Because by the time that they turn their business in, you could be a ways into your lesson. And all of a sudden, now you've discovered that you've got two or three of your procrastinators. Um, and you didn't understand they were having that problem because their procrastination skills are very developed. So a quick pulse check with Kahoot is going to help you understand even where your procrastinators are at in a lesson and in, in their understanding of a concept. And Christine has been bumped out of her first place spot. Last question, folks. Double points, all the money. Pulse checks can help you differentiate instruction or form you some little intervention groups. There's that slow reveal. I like that slow reveal in my pictures. I like to listen to my kids guess what they think is underneath the picture during the slow reveals. I've heard some incredible things. I'm like, why would I put that in a question? No. <laughs> of course you should um, be able to differentiate or come up with some intervention groups based on that quick check that you're gonna get from 
your pulse check. And here we are now at our podium. Dun -dun -dun -dun. CJ in third. Christine in second, fought a very hard game. And huh, for the second time in a row, there is our winner woo -woo, in the Kahoot. So if you were one of the top five, please get a screenshot of the winning podiums and send your information to the always adorable Ms. Isabella, who will help you out on sending you some swag. And here we are at the end of the formal part of the presentation. Thank you for playing and for learning with me. There's my email contact and there's my Twitter handle. And I would be more than happy to answer any questions or anything else that happens to have popped up with the always lovely Miss Isabella while I was chatting. <laughs> Gina, that was amazing. I think uh, people seem to really enjoy both of your cahoots. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and now they can understand firsthand what a pulse check really is. They really are <laughs> one of the most valuable teaching tools that you can get your hands on. Yes, and I've been, you know, we've been watching the Q&A. My, our sweet moderators, Sydney and Steve and Tom have been doing amazing, helping answer everyone's questions. <laughs> I cannot thank them enough. We've been getting a lot of technical questions, Gina. So I not see. too many questions for you specifically, but if anyone has any of them, drop them in the Q&A right now, and I will pick a few for Gina or we might, we might not have any. You might have answered everything in your presentation. Well, that would be quite something. <laughs> <laughs> if I had covered all of the information right. that I need to cover, I should be so lucky. Maybe I should teach Kahoot webinars more often. <laughs> yes, you should. You definitely should. Okay, I do have one good question for you. This is from Catherine. Yes. She asks, how do you handle kids who feel badly and give up when they are not on the leaderboard? There are things that I will do. Like if I notice that my leaderboard is consistently the three or four kids who everybody assumes should always be on the leaderboard, I will do things where I will give and, and for prizes, all I have is some little paper coupons that I use in my classroom. And so if you win a Kahoot, then you get to choose a coupon. And there's simple things like first in line or get to pick Go Noodles for the day. There's a coupon that says get to pick one fun Kahoot to do on Friday. So if you win a Kahoot in my room, you get a coupon. You get to pick your own coupon. And sometimes I'll do things like I will give coupons to only the people that have had an answer streak of five or above. Or I will give coupons to people who had the biggest growth rate during the Kahoot. Mm -hmm. And that helps kind of average things out a little bit. There are times where I'll give Kahoot coupons out to people that I thought tried the hardest during the Kahoot. And that generally evens things out quite a bit. And, and that stops the kids from getting disheartened that they perhaps might not be in the top three or might not be on top of the podium. If you can figure out ways within that Kahoot to give it to the answer streaks or give it to everybody that got more than five answers right in a Kahoot, everybody that got more than four right in a row, then it gives everybody a little more of an equal footing than just those kids that don't have to struggle as much and generally always show up at the top of the leaderboard. That makes sense. Okay, have another question. So I lost oh here it's from susan what is the ideal number of questions for a pulse check no more than 10 no fewer than five i like you that. don't want 
You don't want it to be laborious. I mean, it doesn't need to be 15, 20 questions. I mean, you can tell pretty quickly what it is that goes well and where your misconceptions could be. Because if I come across a misconception, to be perfectly honest, I'm gonna stop the Kahoot at that misconception and pull my marker board over and do a little spot reteaching before I go on. So if you have more than 10 questions, now you've turned this one poor pulse check into an entire lesson. So I'd say no more than 10, no less than five. Perfect. Um, I'm, I'm looking off screen because I have a second computer set up today <laughs> to, to try and manage everything. So that's why I keep- I was just thrilled that the one worked properly for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, da, da. did i see something about homework you might i know the i'm just trying to check the q a i know the chat is the chat moves very quickly yes um oh this is a fun one someone named marnie is wondering what brand do you use to get the good pink in your hair <laughs> um I believe my hairdresser uses Redken, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I do have some conditioner that I put on it every morning in the shower that's a color vive type conditioner that will stain up your shower and your bathtub really badly. But my hair looks lovely. So <laughs> worth it. Yeah, it is worth it. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. La, da, da. Okay, lots of people are liking that you suggest that the pulse checks are not a competition and you try to make it fair for students across the board. That That's getting a lot of great response. I don't, I, I just need to know what you know. I don't want to know what your best friend knows. I don't want to know what the person sitting beside you knows. I truly need to just know what you know. And the more you do them with your kids, the more they really get that concept. And if you explain to them what you use that information for and why it's so important to you, then they really feel like they're kind of in on planning their own lessons, like they're in on what's being retaught to them or what I don't have to reteach because they already got it the first time. So I spend a lot of time talking to my kids about the what and why behind things that I do so that way, I think I get a more genuine response from them when I ask something of them, because they already assume that if I'm asking, it's for a legitimate reason. It's not just to fill time. It's not to drive them crazy. It's not because I have nothing else to do. <laughs> so yeah, the more that, the more you're pretty visible and pretty vulnerable and flexible and accommodating with your kids, the better off you wind up being. So yeah, my kids are pretty used to me saying, this is why we're doing this. So don't blow this off for me. I need you to concentrate on it. And honestly, tell me, because if I head into a lesson after a pulse check and you have not been honest with me and you looked over at Billy's answer and that's how come yours looks better, you're only shooting yourself in the foot in the long run because I'm going to take off into the lesson assuming that we've all got it. And if we don't, then people should have been more honest in the pulse check. That's true. All right, I have one final question for you and then we'll wrap up. Sounds like so, a deal. Bianca is wondering, how can we handle students who get stressed if they face any assessment, even a pulse check? Can we help them to stay relaxed? Do you have any strategies or suggestions for that? You know, actually I do, because I've got Usually at the beginning of the year, kids are real anxious and, and something about something about fifth graders, maybe third grade up, they begin to understand grades and they begin to understand that bad grades are bad things. And so you do get a little more anxiety than you do in the younger grades. So I have actually some breathing activities that sometimes we'll do before we get ready to do a pulse check or we'll jump on YouTube and I'll find one of our favorite activity channels and we'll do a little something, something, little dance routine, a little physical power up, a little something just to kind of take that edge off. And I've been known in pulse checks to crawl out into the audience, so to speak. And if I could really see that somebody is struggling badly, then yeah, I mean, this pulse check shouldn't be the end all be all. I'm not trying to make you 
feed more into your anxiety. So yeah, if I've got somebody who's really, really struggling, I'll curl up beside them and kind of help talk them through a little bit and things like that. So yeah, we'll do some deep breathing, maybe do some yoga stretches or something before we get started, have another talk about how this isn't a graded activity. And yeah, I mean, if you need to, then yeah, I'll come and sit beside you during the pulse check. And because you're going to do better with me sitting next to you than you're going to do if I leave you alone. And, and sometimes that one kid, that one extra anxious kid, you already know what they know and, and what they don't know pretty much. So it's not really worth stressing them out terribly over this one 10 question kahoot. So yeah, or I've had kids where if I know that it's really going to bother them, then I'll give them an office errand to run during the five question kahoot because the information I get from them may not be accurate just due to their anxiety. So yeah, I can deal with that in a different way. I'll send them to run an errand or something or send them over to another teacher's room to get something for me and, and not worry about it. If I'm not grading it and I'm just using it to do a quick check on skills, then there are some kids that sometimes just don't need that extra added piece to an already nervous disposition. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's incredible. I wish I would have had a fifth grade teacher like you. <laughs> oh, me too, because I was terrible at math. I spent most of my recesses inside. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And, and I think it's great that you're teaching students kind of some physical exercises, little things they can do to relax themselves, because that's something I use as an adult all the time. Um, if I'm if I'm nervous or anxious, I'll stand up and do jumping jacks, you know, and that's just a great little release. Uh, but yeah, I have this thing that I do where I breathe in mm -hmm. and then I breathe out for a couple counts longer than I breathe in. And so, yeah, I have the same breathing kind of things that I do when I feel myself getting a little tense or a little tight about something. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you, Gina, for sharing that everything. So Gina, thank you so much. And I'll let you sign us off. Thank you to everybody who hung out until the end. I appreciate everybody hanging out and taking part. And thank you to Kahoot for always being so amazing when it comes to professional development and supporting your teachers and supporting your learners and doing everything that all of the Kahoot people do on a daily basis to make us happier, more educated, more fun having learners. Have a good afternoon, kids. Thank you much. Bye-bye.